Good morning, Hope College. Welcome in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, where all are welcome and included here. Happy Reformation Day. Can I get an amen? Yeah? Yeah. Happy Halloween. Hence the hot dog hat. For those of you who can't see in the back, frankly, <laughs> I had to mustard up some courage to wear this, and yet here we are. Now before we get to the text, let's catch up <laughs> to where we left off and where we're going into this text. Now before our passage for today, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were testing Jesus, so they would ask for abundant <laughs> signs and miracles from Jesus trying to figure out who Jesus was and what he was about. Which leads us to the text today, Matthew 16, verses 13 through 18. For this morning, I'd like to invite all of us to hear this good word and relish in what God is doing. Okay, I worked so hard on those. I'm so happy. That's great. Okay. <laughs> Hashtag dad jokes. All right, let's hear this word from the Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you Say that I am. Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. This is the word of the Lord. So a few weeks ago, I saw the movie Birth of a Nation, and it's the true story of Nat Turner, an enslaved African-American preacher who leads a slave rebellion against the slave owners of that time. This is a movie that uncovers racism and slavery in a very uncomfortable, raw, and yet truth-telling way that is extremely profound. And there's a scene in this movie between Nat Turner and his wife, Cherry. At one point during their conversation, she pulls out what appears to be a tattered piece of cloth. She holds it in her hand so delicately and carefully as if she is holding her child. And she goes on to explain that this patch came from a dress that her mother had made and that on this specific patch from this dress held her true name, her real name. The name Cherry had been given to her by her slave owners when she was bought as a young girl. She tells the story that when she was being bought, her mother ripped the patch off that held her name and gave the patch to her as a reminder of her name. And as Cherry told this story, she revealed her true name to be Madison and that this was one of her most precious items, to remember her name, her true name. We see how names have power in the text that we read for this morning. Jesus walks in to see his disciples and asks the question, who do people say the Son of Man is? And when the disciples collectively couldn't accurately name who the Son of Man is, Jesus then looks and as some commentaries say, specifically at Simon Peter, and asks, but who do you say that I am? I imagine Simon Peter taking several dramatic pauses, pacing back and forth, 
and then says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And at this point, all the jaws have dropped and everyone's looking to Jesus. What is he going to say? To which then Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Friends, this is the declaration of what our church is built upon. Our church is built upon a name, the name that is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. At this point, the Old Testament and the New Testament have collided where the messianic prophecies have been named as being fulfilled in and through the name of Jesus Christ. Through the virgin birth that is prophesied in Isaiah, the birth in Bethlehem from the prophet Micah, the sacrificial death prophesied in Isaiah, his crucifixion and resurrection found in the Psalms, when Peter names Jesus as the Messiah, the son of the living God, this is world altering for the church. In Peter's confession and naming the anointed one, the church has an identity that will even prevail against the gates of Hades. In looking at what the gates of Hades are, in one commentary it discusses that the gates of Hades is uh, the poetic language for the power of death that's found in Isaiah. The name of Jesus prevails amidst life and death. Life and death are hinged on a name. So we've been talking about how names are powerful and that the church is built upon the confession of Peter naming Jesus as the anointed one. And with that, I wonder, what do we name ourselves? Or how do we name other people? Names are powerful, friends. Names are world-shaping. They give us meaning. And like Cherry, we go throughout our lives enslaved to names that aren't ours. We hear the whispers of lies that say, you are not enough. The whispers that turn into screams of I am not worthy, or I am not good. And as we begin to name ourselves incorrectly and begin to believe in these names, the invitation to misname various people groups presents itself. Any of us can turn on the TV these days and hear the names that are spoken over the African American community, immigrants, those who identify as LGBTQ, women, and the list goes on. Names shape our world. So what is going to be our patch of cloth that holds our true name that reminds us who we are? What will you carry around to remind you of who you are? This might look like going to counseling, seeking out a mentor, asking a dear friend, or going to a secret place, or being still before the Lord. Friends, what is going to be your reminder of who you are? Because we so often go throughout our life not remembering who we are or being told we are something that we are not. And then with that, we put on these masks and identities as if every day is Halloween. Because like Madison, we have been bought at a price. And yet unlike her, we don't gain a false identity we receive an even truer name from the one who is the anointed one and has known you since you were in your mother's womb and proclaims and names you as a child, as a son, as a daughter, 
as beautiful, as treasured, and as the beloved. These are our names, friends. It's in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.